We're going to be interpreting the results of the network meta-analysis, one of the approaches that GRADE has developed. And there we go. So I'm going to start with some questions uh, for any of you who present and are looking for tips for presenters. Um, the uh, one tip is to know your audience. So the first question I have for you is your familiarity with GRADE's approach to rating certainty in pairwise ordinary uh, meta-analyses. Um, in terms of this polling, we're not going to wait too long for you to make your answers. So if you want to participate in the poll, um, then you have about 10 seconds to do so. And I think we more or less um, used up uh, our 10 seconds. So we can stop here. And we found that there's quite a distribution of, um, uh, of familiarity with grade with over 50% of the people being a little familiar or not a lot of familiar. And for anybody who presents, sometimes you have a challenge with heterogeneity of experience and desires in your participants. So those who are very or moderately familiar will have to forgive me for those who are a little or not at all familiar. I'm gonna take a little bit of time explaining the basics of grade rating of certainty of evidence so that everybody is uh, up to speed. Next question then is, how familiar are you with the basic principles of network meta analysis? Um, again, um, this will determine how much time I spend on the basics of network meta-analysis. And the results coming in here look like it's about 50-50 uh, preliminary results like in the election, uh, 50 more or less 50-50 of those who are very or moderately familiar and those who are a little or not familiar. Once again, for those who are very familiar, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, I'd like Britt to bring everyone up to speed. Um, and uh, as a result, um, as a result, we'll spend a little bit of time on the basics. And given what we've heard so far, um, I'm not even going to do the poll of have you looked at this paper because already um, there's a lot of people who, given their prior answers, could not have looked at this paper, which is the paper we're going to be discussing. So we're going now to grades approach, a uh, long-standing approach, first published in 2004 in the BMJ about uh, rating certainty or confidence or quality of evidence. Certainty, confidence, and quality are synonyms uh, for the trustworthiness of the evidence. And there are four categories, high, moderate, low, and very low certainty or quality of evidence. Randomized trials start as high certainty evidence. Observational studies start as low certainty evidence. However, just because you have randomized trials doesn't mean it ends up being high certainty evidence. Uh, unconcealed, unblinded, and lots of loss to follow up, we're gonna be rating down for risk of bias. The results have unexplained heterogeneity, we're gonna be rating down for inconsistency. The population, for instance, that was in the trials is different from our population of interest, and we have problems with indirectness. Confidence intervals are wide, randomized trials, but have few patients and few events. We're going to have imprecision, and we'd write down for that. And finally, everything else can be okay, but we may be worried about publication bias. So very often, one or more of these problems exist, and randomized trials do not end up as high certainty evidence, but at a lower value. Observational studies start as low certainty or quality of evidence, but they can be rated up most commonly for a large or very large effect. So in terms of large or very large effects, we're looking at things like dialysis for people with renal failure, hip replacements for people with hip osteoarthritis, large and quick effects that may lead us to be moderately or even highly certain or confident or have qual high quality of evidence for the issue we're considering. So that's the fundamentals of the great approach for 
uh, conventional meta-analysis comparing A to B. Um, this is what distinguishes a network meta-analysis from a conventional meta-analysis. Obviously, one thing that distinguishes it, it's not just pairs, it's three or more treatments. But what else distinguishes it is that we rely in the network meta-analysis not only on the direct comparisons between interventions, but on indirect comparisons. What do we mean by indirect comparisons? We're interested in A versus B. We may or may not have direct evidence, but we also can gather and make inferences about A versus B from the relation between A versus C and B versus C. So in this case, A versus C shows a odds ratio of 0.5, a 50% reduction in the odds of some bad event like death happening. On the other hand, B versus C shows no difference in the events between patients who received B and patients who received C. So next poll, what you've seen so far, what is the, um, uh, what is a better treatment? Is it A or is it B? Okay, and most people are correctly saying that it is, uh, A is the better treatment. And it seems logical that um, with, if A reduces events by 50%, the odds of events, and B doesn't reduce it at all, A looks like it has a big effect, B looks like it has no effect, suggest that A is better than B when you consider that what happened when they were compared to C. So you have just done a indirect comparison in your heads and most of you got it right that A appears better than B. Now, if you were guessing at the odds ratio for A versus B, what would your guess be? Would it be 0.5? or would it be something else? Okay, this time we're getting closer. We have a majority saying 0.5, but we're getting uh, closer to equal. Well, as it turns out, 0.5 is the right answer. Um, and in fact, when we have these indirect comparisons, the way we get our best estimate of the effects of A versus B in this case is to take the ratio of odds ratios. So we take 0.5 and divide it by 1.0 as our best estimate of the odds of A versus B. And in this case, 0.5 over 1.0 is 0.5. So those are the bait, what we've reviewed just now are the basic principles of indirect comparisons that are very fundamental to a network meta-analysis. And to illustrate how that plays out, here is an example from uh, treatments to help people stop smoking, where you have nicotine replacement therapy given alone or with another nicotine replacement therapy, uh, with an antidepressant, varenicline, or antidepressants at low. And as you can see, uh, we have five direct comparisons, um, which gives us some information, but we'd really like to compare every treatment to every other treatment. And that's in fact what network meta-analysis allows us to do. When you consider and take into account all the indirect comparisons, we are now able to compare every treatment to every other treatment and get best estimates of the treatment effect. So that is the very nifty thing about network meta-analysis that the indirect comparisons allow us to have estimates of treatments even when they have not been compared directly. Well, one of the issues when network meta-analysis came along is it presented a challenge to the grade working group. Grade working group had done a lot of work 
to make uh, our suggestions, our guidance for looking at the certainty of evidence uh, in paired comparisons, which we've went through on an earlier slide with the five reasons for, with the uh, four categories, high, moderate, low, and very low. Uh, randomized trials start as high, observational studies start as low. Uh, randomized trials can be rated down, five reasons. Uh, observational studies can be rated up. But we didn't have a way of doing, of applying this to network meta-analysis. So we had to develop a fundamentally new system of applying grade to network meta-analysis. And we weren't, the grade working group wasn't the only ones that work on this. A group from um, Cochrane led by Georgia Salanti and Julian Higgins uh, proposed an approach that as you see there highlighted was based on grade methodology for pairwise meta-analysis, but differed and was done in parallel with what the grade working group was doing. So we in the grade working group were uh, developing our approach. And so nowadays you actually have two approaches, uh, two strategies using fundamental grade principles for looking at the certainty or quality of evidence in network meta-analysis one suggested by the great working group and one suggested by uh, yeah, folks from the Cochrane collaboration. Uh, this is Romina Brignard-Dardello, a young faculty member uh, at our institution at McMaster University, who after the initial development of the great approach has led to refinements in the great approach for network meta-analysis. Uh, she's published uh, five or six papers where she's the first author and led this work in refining the great approach to network meta-analysis. And that includes what I'm going to present now, uh, which is the great approach for interpreting the results of network meta-analysis.